when you have followed my channel, uh, you can see that I was busy with this uh, sine wave generator going from, say, approximately 130 kilohertz up to, say, 8 megahertz. Though it could work on uh, higher frequencies, pro maximum approximately 12 megahertz anyway. And I told that I had to make a buffer stage. Well, here is that buffer stage. It works. It's not ideal at the moment. And then especially it gives a slight distortion, but that can be cured very easily. And I will show what I mean. Here is the waveform out of the buffer. So at first we have that field effect transistor oscillator with its extremely sensitive output at the source. And say when when we connect um, another electronic circuit to the source and that circuit has a very low impedance the whole oscillation stops. But um, that's the reason why you need that buffer and I've made it also with a field effect transistor here. The same field effect transistor that I've used earlier, the BF256A. Anyway, small distortion, but when I touch the circuit with my fingers, the distortion is gone, so I have to find out the right, say, uh, capacitance from the buffer stage to ground, say, the output of the oscillator at its source, and then to the buffer stage. That's a critical point. So that will surely succeed within a few days, a few weeks, etc., etc. Well, uh, what I wanted to tell now is about the power supply. My idea was to make uh, at first a power supply. That's always a good idea. There was in that uh, final uh, generator originally this transformer, the black one here now in the middle of the screen, and I will use it again in this new setup. And uh, perhaps it's interesting to show how I made it. And in fact, it uh, regards all to say um, one transistor series regulator circuits uh, with the help of a, a Zena diode and one transistor. That can work very good. It can, they can work also on, say, high currents. Though there is some loss due to the frequency drop uh, inside that transistor. I will tell more about it. Um, but for, say, such a simple circuit as this oscillator needs, it is a very good option. So, let me show the schematic first. This is the schematic and I've paid much attention to it in earlier videos on my YouTube channel. Completely classic. There's always a voltage drop here uh, between the collector and the emitter. Uh, and the heat developed inside that transistor is related to that voltage drop and the current. Say there is a voltage drop of uh, 3 volts and 1 uh, ampere current flows here. Uh, the dissipation inside the transistor is 3 watt and that's quite high. But uh, this circuit only regards tiny currents, say 5 milliampere up to 100 milliampere. And in that case, uh, the transistor will never get very hot. 
of course there's always the question of the voltage drop. Uh, here is the uh, input transformer. Here we have in this transformer officially it was indicated for 31 volts AC. But when I measured it it was somewhat lower uh, and in fact it doesn't matter much. It's all say about the principles. Use a fuse here. Good idea in this case because the current here is not very high. You say 100 milliampere. And perhaps interesting to show is that I've used here a resistor. That resistor, of course, limits the maximum current that can flow. And that's also, say, a kind of safety measure. Um, the order is 100 ohms up to 330 ohms. And we are talking again about these tiny currents. So it limits the current, it protects the uh, transistor. Also the reason why you don't need here a fuse anyway. And the good uh, idea of this is that this is also a filter. 10 microfarad here, 470 microfarad here. With that uh, resistor inside it acts as a filter. And um, well, that's a good idea because uh, the ripple is pushed down. Even with such a small um, uh, capacitor, normally this is approximately 4700 microfarad. Anyway, uh, solder always parallel to the electrodes of such a capacitor. A 100, and nano, 100 nanofarad capacitor, that is 0.1 microfarad capacitor, a high value resistor. And here you see that also an end capacitor, uh, again a 0.1 microfarad um, uh, capacitor, non-polar capacitor. The voltage must be of course uh, match with the output voltage, say 50% higher, and a resistor. The transistor does the job and there is a voltage, uh, always a voltage drop of approximately 0.8 volt because it's a silicon transistor. Here is the Zener. The Zener sets, sets the uh, output voltage and there is a capacitor parallel to the Zener that is in this case 10 microfarad but very important uh, um, the capacitance that the circuit that is connected here to the output C's is the amplification factor multiplied by the capacitance capacitor value so that is 70 multiplied by 10 is approximately 7000. So there is an enormous hum rejection here at the output and that means that uh, you can also use this circuit for a sensitive audio pre-amplifier. Not an end amplifier of course because this circuit cannot give a lot of current. Though when you move here the uh, resistor, remove, that's what I mean, and I want to demonstrate that. When you shortcut here that resistor, uh, the voltage will go up. The whole circuit can give out much more current. So in that case this setup is usable, say, for a maximum output current in the order of 300 milliampere up to 700 milliampere. For higher currents, this has to be a Darlington, etc., etc. Much more is there in my uh, on my YouTube channel, and you can search there via the the Looking Glass Radio Fun 232 on YouTube. I want to 
say the shoulder schematic a little bit. Here is the BD139 transistor. It's a little bit covered by wiring. Here is the capacitor directly connected to the uh, bridge rectifier. Here is the bridge rectifier and say all the other capacitors. And here, perhaps visible, is that uh, Zener diode. It's yellow. About Zener diodes, you can see here that I've used a 10K, 10,000 ohm resistor. Uh, when the Zener diode has to do its work, say stabilizing the voltage, there must all, always be a certain tiny current flowing through that Zener diode. That's important. And that, uh, that's why I've used here 10K, 10,000 ohms. But it could be that in other cases this must be uh, 4,700 ohms. Ohm, so 4K7, that's also a good value. It depends a little bit on the output voltage that you need. So for 12 volt, for a 12 volt circuit with one uh, transistor, this is approximately uh, 1K5. For a 24 volt output, it is ap approximately between 4K7 and 10K. That must be test it out experimentally and uh, in that case use here a dummy load uh, study the waveform study whether you have ripple here when you have too much ripple make this value higher say for uh, 47 microfarad 100 microfarad and then you damp out the ripple completely uh, and that is related to higher output currents. Not in this case again, 5 milliampere, 100 milliampere, etc. etc. Schematic again, that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. Pen over somewhat. And finally, look at this. At the buffer, the experimental buffer stage, the front again of the circuit, the project that I'm working on, and the power supply again. In fact, when you uh, have some insights, it's very, very easy to make. And perhaps I can show the effect of bridging the resistor in the circuit. This is the effect. Now that resistor of um, 330 ohm is active and now it's shortcut. Of course the, the voltage goes up very very substantially. That also means that you can take out more current. But uh, well, that's one of the options that you have with this schematic.